So like there's like one side. Okay, let's start the curve sketching. The first example that we're going to do today is uh, something that I mentioned last time, yesterday's class. One over one plus e. I want to do this because we already know a lot about this function. So I'm o I'm only going to write down the, the things that we we found out so far. Um, first, the uh, limit of x going to infinity. Uh, 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. This was. What was the value? Uh, zero. E to the negative infinity becomes 0, so you have 1 over 1. Whereas so the limit of x going to negative infinity was. Zero. Those were giving me the horizontal asymptotes, as I said yesterday. Um, we also did the y-intercept as when x is set to zero. If x is set to zero, then y is one over one plus e to the zeroth power, which is one over two. Then. So then, then I, I said, uh, here's the graph, uh, without really telling you why. And that's, that's the part we are going to do today. So uh, curve sketching makes use of the limit information, some points that you know, and along with that, the derivative and its, sec its second derivative. Because uh, the derivative tells us if it's increasing or decreasing. Second derivative tells us how it's curved. Is it concave up or down? Right. Y prime using the quotient rule. Um, actually, let's just make use of the following. One over x differentiates to negative one over x squared. That this thing appears many times, and therefore you should just memorize it as a formula. So if I, if I think of that formula along with the chain rule for this one, I have negative 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x squared. Uh, because I'm thinking of this entire thing like an x here. But then the chain rule says I have to pull the inside out and differentiate. So I have to take e to the negative x, which was the inside function, and I'm differentiating it. Right, because 1 differentiates to 0, e to the negative x differentiates to? To differentiate this, you need the chain rule again. Right? So e to the negative x differentiates to e to the negative x times negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1, that's positive. So you end up with e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared. That's the derivative. Okay. Now, do you see that uh, <coughs> this is always positive? Because exponential functions are always positive. Anything squared is, again, positive. So this is always positive. What does that mean? Since y prime is positive for any x, What, what's the conclusion? If we know that the derivative is always positive, what do we know? Y is always increasing. Y is always increasing. Uh, y is always increasing. That's the So that's. This is the uh, first conclusion that you can make. From, from y prime. The second thing is you need the second derivative. To do this, you need now you really need the, the, 
the quotient rule where you square the denominator, 1 plus e to the negative x should be taken to the four, fourth power and differentiate the top first times the bottom minus differentiate the bottom times the top. Uh, e to the negative x differentiates to negative e to the negative x. And then this thing differentiates to 2 times um, negative, no, 1 plus e to the negative x times negative e to the negative x. And this thing comes out because I'm using the chain rule. And then, then this e to the negative x is e to the negative x. Okay. So when I'm, when I'm differentiating this, I need to use the chain rule. 2 comes down. This has to be pulled out and differentiated. If you differentiate, you get that. Over 1 <coughs> plus e to the negative x to the fourth. Negative of negative is positive. And now let's try to simplify as much as possible. Uh, e to the negative x is both uh, a common factor. It's a common factor. It's in both of the terms. 1 plus e to the negative x is again in both of the terms. And therefore, what you have is here's negative 1 times uh, from the first term if one of the 1 plus e to the negative x surviving. And from the second one, after factoring these out, you have plus 2 times e to the negative x over 1 plus e to the negative x to the fourth. See, because we're trying to figure out when, the, when this y double prime is positive or negative, you really need to simplify this. If you don't simplify, then you don't know. Uh, it's really hard to tell when this is positive or negative. Okay. All right. So one plus e to the negative x and one plus e to the negative x. These are same, so I can cancel one of, one away from the four. So what remains in the denominator is three of them. So that's gone. This is canceled with one of the four guys down here. And then negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times negative e to the negative x will have a negative 1 times this, but this, this is another like term, so you will end up with um, plus e to the negative x. Okay. Now, we don't care about the value of this second derivative. All we care is whether it's positive or negative because uh, we we want to know where it's concave up or concave down. Do you see that this is always <coughs> positive? And this is always positive? E to the negative x is always positive. Positive plus positive is positive. This is positive. So the, the only thing that matters, or the only thing that can change the sign, is this thing here. Yes? Where did the two exponent go? Two, and, uh, one plus e to the negative. two exponent go. Which one? Uh, it's negative e to the negative x times one plus e to the negative x squared. Uh, two times. No, up, up, um, up here. Yeah, that this right one? there. Yeah. This one. Where did it go? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I factored one plus e to the negative x out. But this is 1 plus e to the negative x times 1 plus e to the negative x. Okay. So it's this times that. So this, this single one got broken into two, two things multiplied together. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. Yeah, I should have asked. Uh, do you have any other questions on, on this computation? Yes? Uh, where did the 2 from the 2 e to the negative x go? Oh, so this is negative e to the negative x. That's 2e to the negative x. 
Therefore, they are like terms, right? So if you add, let me get it. So if you multiply these two, it's negative e to the negative x, and you have plus e to e to the negative x. These are like terms, e to the negative x, e to the negative x, like terms, right? Mm -hmm. And you have negative 1 plus 2, what's that? Plus 1. And that's why I'm writing down plus e to the negative x. <coughs> Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. okay, now now what we have to do is uh, negative 1 plus e to the negative x. Uh, we need to know when this is positive. How do you know when a function is positive or negative? I think we talked about this before when we were doing uh, first derivative tests and second derivative tests. First, you identify the point where this is equal to 0, right? So let me do that in red. So, um, negative 1 plus e to the negative x equals 0. When does this happen? For what value of x is this true? I mean, you, one way to solve this will be taking ln both sides, and then uh, ln cancels e, and ln of 1 is 0. You can do it like that. But this actually has a very simple solution. What is it? Zero. If anything to the zeroth power is one. If you want one, it better be the exponent zero. So if you think of it that way, the solution is x equal to zero. And then you look for the point before and after. You, you take, so you put the number line, put the x values that will make this thing zero. And then you take sample points after 0, I'll take 1 as a sample point, negative 1 as another sample point. And then plug these values in here to see whether you, you get a positive value or not. So if, if it's 1, uh, I think I should erase this. It's too clogged. Let me erase all this. Oh, I shouldn't erase the final answer. So let me write down the final answer. The y double prime is e to the negative x. I erase that here. Uh, times negative 1 plus e to the negative x over 1 plus e to the negative x. So cubed. And uh, since all of these are positive, all we want to find out is the sign of, is this positive or negative? That's the question we're trying to figure out. Okay. And the way we're approaching it is 0, test point 1, test point negative 1, and we have to evaluate this side. Okay. okay, so first of all, if I plug in 1, what do I get? Negative 1, so for x equal to 1, I get negative 1 plus e to the negative 1. And that's negative 1 plus 1 over e. Do you recall the value of e approximately? You should. 2.71. Oh, 2.71a, yeah. something, yeah. So it's about 2.7, or really roughly, it's like 1 third. Negative 1 plus 1 third? Positive or negative? Negative. Right? So this is negative. So you can say, if you plug it, plug one, you get, oh, it's a negative. Then you get negative. Okay. Now, if you do x equal to negative one, what do you do? negative one plus e to the negative of negative one, this is e to the positive one, minus one. Again, 2.7 minus one is about 1.7. So this is positive. That's positive. So that's what y double prime does. Now what does that tell us about y then? <coughs> For y, we know that before 0, y is concave 
up. And after zero, it's concave down. That's the concavity. Okay. And uh, what we have on the board is now enough to draw the graph of the, the original function. So let's try to put everything together. First of all, x going to infinity gives you 1. What does that mean? That means at 1, you have a horizontal asymptote. And as the graph goes, extends to the right, it will get closer and closer to 1. Now, if you send x to negative infinity, it gives you 0. That means if you send the graph to the left, it will get closer and closer to the x-axis. So that's another horizontal asymptote. Two horizontal asymptotes. Uh, the y-intercept being one half means it has to pass through this point. Now, I didn't mention this, but uh, there's no x-intercept for this graph because for x-intercept to happen, you need y to be zero. For this value to be zero, you need the top to be zero, but top is one, so they can never be zero. So you, you don't have any x -intercept. You just have a single y-intercept. Now, another thing that we know is that it has to increase. So it's increasing, increasing. It has to be. If you read from left to right, it, ha it has to increase. When we talk about increasing, decreasing, we only uh, read it from left to right. I mean, it's confusing because it, if, if the graph goes like that, and if you if you try to move to the left, it sounds like it's decreasing, but. Uh, when we say it's increasing, it has to be increasing like this. And then, this is, this is how, how you include concavity. So first, without concavity, you just have a straight line that's, that's going up. Then, think about how to incorporate this concavity. Concave, this is concave up, meaning that something is pushing it down. Right? So think about this as a, a a rubber, rubber stick or something, uh, and, and you're pushing this down. How would it bend? It's going to bend like this, wouldn't it? And then, for the right side, it's concave down. So how would it bend? You have to push it from below. Right? So it's going to bend like that. So incorporating those concavity, I finally have the curve sketched in the following form. So that, that's the answer.